Good evening. On July 1, in his first full day in office, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. vetoed the bill creating the Bulacan Airport City Special Economic Zone, legislation that originated in the House of Representatives in 2020, but was sponsored in the Senate in 2022 by the new president's own sister. The veto caused some commotion in the public square. Was this an unexpectedly early glimpse into an important conflict within the administration? And was this rare veto by an incoming president of a bill passed by an outgoing Congress actually, and to quote a sitting senator, a unique legal quandary? Let's talk. I am John Neri, and you are in the public square. There is so much to unpack in this veto. All sorts of issues are involved. Procedural, political, economic, environmental, and the list goes on. It is very much a live case or controversy. And as one business journalist said, there remain many unknowns. How can we begin to understand it all? Tonight, let's focus on the procedural and political aspect of the veto. I'm happy to say that tonight we are joined by two eminent resource persons with considerable experience working in, studying, or reporting on the Senate. Dr. Jean Encinas Franco is Associate Professor of Political Science at the University of the Philippines, Diliman. Before she became a full-time and esteemed academic, she worked in the Senate for 15 years, where she was a Director of the Economic Planning Office. Mr. Manny Mogato is a veteran journalist who started in the field back when the first President Marcos was still dictator. Now editor-at-large at Press One and defense editor at One News, Mr. Mogato served as chief political reporter of the Reuters news agency in the Philippines for almost two decades, covering the Senate, among other uh, beats. In 2018, he won the Pulitzer Prize for his reporting on extrajudicial killings. Good evening, Professor Franco and Mr. Mogato. Uh, thank you for joining us today in the public square. Good evening, um, good evening. Johnny. Yeah, good evening, Professor Jean. Good uh, evening, no, Jean uh, I, I'll start by asking you, so is this even possible? I did not realize that an incoming president can veto the legislative work of an outgoing Congress. Oo nga eh. I have not seen a case like this, and uh, procedurally, of course, that's going to be ano no. Uh, sabi nga ng isang ano, it's a legal quandary, as you said earlier. Mm -hmm. But then, um, some people are saying that um, ano naman daw continuing body, no? Mm -hmm. ang, ang Senate, um, and that's why. Um, the um, the incoming or the new president can actually do what he did but politically speaking uh i'm looking at the fact that this has never happened before at least to my recollection secondly a um normally a an incoming president would uh tend to um ensure that there's goodwill mm -hmm. and uh then to have a would would want to have a positive uh, atmosphere when during especially during the first uh, 100 days uh, of his uh, new administration so it's um, it's actually a puzzle to me why uh, uh, President uh, Marcos Jr. did what uh, he just did a few days ago. Yeah and it, in, in, in a way it was his first major act no as, uh, as president. Uh, Manny, have you ever, uh, do you recall anything like this um, in your coverage? Uh, you know, I, I actually invited a, a former senator who completed three full terms in the Senate. And he declined because he said, quote unquote, I have no experience uh, with this. No? Uh, Manny, do you recall anything like this? Well, I agree with uh, Professor Jean that I think this is the first time. Uh, encountered that uh, the president vetoed a proposed bill because normally the president vetoed 
normally the president vetoes a uh, a bill that is already enacted by uh, Congress. Mm -hmm. So it's really very uh, strange. Uh, why uh, the president, why the pres president Marcos suddenly rejected a proposed bill when he can he can actually do nothing about it because it's not yet passed in Congress. So yeah. procedurally, I think there's something strange in the in the veto of the president. I, I did not realize that um, the lapsing into law provision uh, still works uh, in between Congresses. Um, so this uh, particular uh, bill uh, was consolidated. Uh, the Senate uh, voted on it uh, and uh, passed it uh, to the office of the president on June 3. You know? The term of President Duterte, of course, ended on June 30 at 12 noon. Right? Um, but President Marcos Jr. vetoed this on July 1 because in their theory, if did, he did not veto it, it would lapse into law on uh, July two or three, so that that was that was the thinking. Uh, right now, there is another uh, late uh, act of legislation, something to do with the uh, vape law, you know? and uh, its uh, opponents want President Marcos to also veto that law you know? instead of it lapsing into. Uh, law. So Senator Chis Escudero, recently re-elected to the Senate, uh, said the other day, this is a unique legal quandary. You know? um, I think, as uh, Professor Jean pointed out, maybe there's more to this on the political side. You know? So maybe we can go into that a little bit later. I, I just want to ask some more procedural questions. You know? mm -hmm. uh, you how will this appear in the statute books if if uh, if it had become law? No? How would it have appeared in the statute book? So signed into law, Senate President Tito Soto, Speaker of the House Velasco, and then the President would be uh, Marcos Jr. already because mm -hmm. it became law on July yeah. 3. That that's a good question. Kasi technically speaking, wala pang Senate President na ano, di ba? Kasi sa uh, I don't know. Diba? Sa, sa so na pa magkakaroon. And mm -hmm. um, si Senate President Soto, his term expired in June 30. Yes. On June 30 at noon also. Mm -hmm. Di ba? So mm -hmm. uh, when the yeah, kung, kung if it was signed, no, uh, ganun nga ang mangyayari. Sino yung signatory dun sa ano, sa dun sa enrolled copy nung 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 bill, yung sa sign na ng ng president. No, but it's it's a mystery, you know. <laughs> Parang this do you think? Uh, Manny, would you agree na in a way this is a Duterte legacy? Kasi parang si President Duterte uh, um, allowed so many bills to lapse in the law. Well, uh, during his last months in office, practically, marami siyang naipasa na batas na mm hindi -hmm. natin alam. Basta lumabas na lang na mm -hmm. nag-lapse into law. No? Mm -hmm. Marami yan eh. Pero yung nga, ah, sabi nga ni Professor, yung terms of office ng Presidente, ng Senate, at ng Congress Speaker, mm -hmm. eh nag-end nung June 30. Mm -hmm. So practically, and hindi natin alam kung ano mangyayari dun sa bill kung nag-lapse nga yan into law. Uh, siguro dahil si Pangulong Duterte pa yung Pangulo nung nakaraang termino, no? nung nakaraang uh, uh, 2016 to 2022, eh baka sa so, palin yung nandun nakapirma sa batas, kaya lang hindi niya napirmahan. Nag-lapse into law lang. That's right. That's right. Actually, 
Uh, Manny, you you you're a defense editor. Uh, you're part of the TV5 group also, no? If I'm not mistaken, the renewal of the franchise for TV5 uh, was a law that lapsed into law, no? In the yes, that's correct. Oh, in the in the in the the president president. Yeah. So that's one oh, thing. Of course, kasi, hmm. oh. go ahead. Kasi uh, John, yung ibig yung ano rin kasi the the, um, the impact of um a law that was allowed by the executive or the president to lapse into law is such that parang malamig yung what you call yung parang the president has a lukewarm right. view or um, what you call this sense of that particular proposed proposed legislation kaya ipapalaps into law so he, uh, he or she may not be uh, totally uh, uh, in agreement with what's contained in the law pero pinapasa niya. So parang gano'n yung di ba, ibig sabihin ng, ng something that was that lapsed into law, no? That's right. I'm, 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 uh, right now there's a there's a proposed uh, bill to change the name of the Nino Aquino International Airport. Uh, Manny, if if I remember correctly, no, uh, that that became law without uh, the support of President Aquino. I think she she said she did not want to to sign it. So I, I, I'm not sure if technically it also lapsed into law, pero walang, walang benefit of executive action yata yun, ano? Uh, yes, correct. Oh. I, pero, I, I itong, pero itong bagong proposal to rename the airport, I think is uh, untimely because uh, we have so many problems, no? Uh, inflation, uh, the war in Ukraine, so maraming ipakyan sa ating ekonomiya na dapat nilang unahin dahil nahihirapan na ang ating mamayan. So hindi nang siguro urgent yung pagkapangalan ng bagong air- ng airport. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and for me naman, ayusin yung airport. I mean, what's in the name, no? I mean, make it a world-class airport, no? Uh, an airport... Uh, which uh, any Filipino can be proud of, no? Instead of uh, thinking about, you know, names. Yeah, that, the, 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 that issue is also related to the issue that we're studying now because it's about airports, no? So yeah. What, <laughs> what has been vetoed is the uh, attempt uh, of the, both houses of Congress to create a special economic zone uh, that will benefit the... Bulacan Airport Project of uh, San Miguel Corporation uh, CEO Ramon Ang, right? Uh, but there are other uh, airport projects, massive uh, airport projects ongoing. So there's another one uh, in Sangli Point. I think that uh, uh, newly re-elected Cavite Governor uh, Don Vic Remulia said he's going to push for that, no? He also has uh, backers, uh, including some tycoons. And then, of course, there's an ongoing uh, investment in Clark, uh, which is quite near to the Bulacan Airport. No? So that's 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 another thing that a group of tycoons also uh, supporting that. So you have these three uh, three major uh, airport uh, airport complexes on top of the Naia uh, uh, existing airport. So that's what where we that's where we are. Anyway, I, I just wanted to uh, close this part of the discussion on the procedure aspect. I think by saying I don't know if you will agree with me that uh, if uh, if the uh, majority in the House or in the Senate were hostile to the incoming president, uh, perhaps we can look forward to uh, uh, we would have anticipated a Supreme Court uh, case, no? Or maybe there's an attempt to override the veto with two-thirds vote and, and so on. But I think, as Dr. Jean uh, mentioned in passing earlier, President Marcos Jr. seems confident that uh, his veto will not be overridden. Yeah. Um, wala, meron, meron na ba? Wala pang na-override na, na veto. To my mind din, ano? Ang... Uh, ang Congress, Philippine Congress. That that's also and yung I think the the mere fact that uh, President Marcos Jr. Um, vetoed this uh, uh, bill is also a manifestation, a demonstration that he's very confident about his uh, control of both houses of Congress. Because I'm pretty sure. Um, I mean, 
a lot of them supported this you know, no this bill because i've seen also the press releases eh, the past two or three years mm-hmm. i mean the chairperson for instance of the public services committee see si senator grace paul was very gung ho mm-hmm. about uh right. about bill uh that it will supposedly create jobs and um 450,000 jobs nga ang na, nabasa ko sa press release and that mm-hmm. you know uh, hindi malulugi ang gobyerno um so yeah um there are a lot of uh questions actually as to why uh this bill was suddenly vetoed yeah i mean senator joel villanueva who is also from bulacan no as also, also gung ho about this And of course, the main sponsor uh, in the Senate uh, was uh, Amy Marcos, Senator Amy Marcos. Uh, it's very interesting that, so maybe we can go to the political side of it now. But it's very interesting that over the last few days, she she's had basically three reactions. Her first reaction, uh, the first time she heard of it was, uh, well, that shows you, you know, the independence of the different branches of government. And then the second day, she said, you know, this is really mystifying to me. You know, uh, I don't know. Uh, why this was done and so on. I, I'm afraid that uh, uh, people will, uh, investors will get the wrong signal. And then by the third day, her response had 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 reached the point of, where she said, I don't know, baka may mga parang nagbumulong kay, uh, to her brother or may naggagaling-galingan. <laughs> no? uh, so parang, okay, What do you make of that? Maybe I can ask uh, Manny first as a veteran journalist. What can we make of that, Manny? No? Uh, this is coming from the president's own sister. I, I think may, ano, you know, may dynamics yung magkapatid. Eh, no? mm-hmm. Nung, kung noong nakaraang administrasyon, ang dynamics is between the father and the daughter. Mm-hmm. Ngayon, eh, mukhang hindi makasundo si Amy at si Bong Bong. No? Hindi lang sa airport issue, no? Uh, kung maalala mo, Amy supported uh, Cynthia Villar to become uh, Senate President. E mukhang ang gusto ni Bongbong si Mig Subiri. No? So maraming, ano, maraming, maraming nangyayari na uh, maski tayo ay magtataka na bakit ang magkapatid ay hindi makasundo sa ilang mga bagay-bagay. No? Pero tingin, tingin ko naman yung sa airport project na yan, siguro ang iniisip ni Bongbong eh manulugi ang gobyerno dahil kung matutuloy yung special economic zone, eh napakaraming tax break at tax holiday na ibibigay at incentive sa mga locator dyan sa airport city na yan, no? Uh, although sinasabi ni San Miguel Corporation Chairman mm-hmm. uh, Ramon Ang na it will bring in about 200 billion dollars in exports mm-hmm. eh siguro ang 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 pananaw nung nasa gobyerno ngayon ni Pangulong Marcos eh paano naman yung mga taxes na kikitain namin baka mabawasan no? so siguro isa yan pero Napakabilis din na naayos itong problema no kasi after nung veto ni Pangulong Marcos eh sumunod eh nag-statement itong si uh, Press Secretary Trixie Angeles at sinasabi mm-hmm. ng hindi naman daw uh, opposed ang pangulo sa nasabing project kundi meron lang fine tuning na gagawin no uh, dun sa economic zone so mabilis na ayos pero tingin ko eh maraming tanong na dapat silang sagutin bakit nangyari nga ito itong uh, pagbibito no actually nakakapagtaka nga yung uh, explanation ng palas no so the veto statement which was uh, unusual i mean different from the Duterte style because it was you know quite detailed uh, quite an articulate uh, argument, uh, mentioned, among other things, that the airport was perhaps too close to an existing uh, facility, Clark. No? Uh, so parang an implication was parang uh, we can't have two uh, large airports close to each other. No? 
But then the following day, when uh, PCO Secretary uh, Trixie uh, Cruz Angeles uh, spoke, she said, oh, the president supports this. We just need to sharpen. Mm. Or the shoes mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So parang, how can you sharpen something if fundamentally uh, you objected to it because it's, you know, uh, geographically too close to, to one? Anyway, so talagang nakapagtataka. Uh, Dr. Jean, your, your thoughts on this? Yeah. Uh, probably uh, what uh, they wanted to say is you may sharpen it so that it can be refiled. But mm -hmm. uh, normally kasi you refile uh, in another Congress. Meaning to say after, diba, like for instance, the bills that were not approved in previous in the previous Congress can be refiled by another legislator or by the same legislator in this uh, uh, pang ilang Congress na ba to? Uh, 19th? Oh. Mm. So, so, ganun. so I don't know um, what will happen to to this uh, proposed legislation if it can be refiled. Sorry, I, um, I, um, it escapes me right now how uh, the procedure will happen given that it was vetoed um, in this, uh, no, no? Pero hindi pa naman nagsistart yung... yung Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so one of the one of the many sponsors in the house, uh, uh, Congressman Joey Salceda, immediately replied to the veto by saying, uh, "You know, he's disappointed, but he will file uh, the, uh, a new bill, no? Uh, taking so into consideration, yeah, taking into consideration what the palace, what the president said. No? Mm -hmm. So, parang there's a, there's a readiness to just you know just uh, go through the legislative mill, uh, yeah, again, no." So, uh, other, yeah, so yun nga, ganun ang gagawin. So they will take note of what, what were uh, the suggestions of the veto, vetoed bill and then uh, put it in, in the new version. Siguro that's the, ano. Yeah, that's, that's right. Remedy. But as she also pointed out, uh, this enjoyed uh, a tr tremendous support from both houses of Congress. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, passed overwhelmingly in the House passed unanimously uh, in the Senate, no? uh, 21 of the members present voting for for this. no. Uh, and then, you know, it just beat out. So, medyo nagulat nga siguro yung mga senador at saka yung Congress. Yeah, no? yeah. And, and the trouble with refiling it is that there's no assurance. That's right. That it will, sy syempre, laging masikip, especially now that we have so many uh, problems, no? Mas, laging masikip naman yung legislative mill, eh, ne? no? For one, sa, sa thousands of bill na, bills na finofile, tapos merong makakalusot, ma, makaka, mapupunta sa floor, it will take years, di ba? At saka, ang una nila, budget. Yeah, yeah. Oh. 2023 budget, kasi malaki yung problema natin sa energy at food crisis. Mm-mm, mm, -mm, mm, -mm. That's right. And it actually took two years. No, uh, It was passed very, very quickly in the House in 2020. Mm -hmm. And then it languished in the Senate for two years. Kaya nga, mm -hmm. it's in the situation. Eh. Uh, Doon na sa huli, no? at tinapos ng, ng, uh, ng Senado. No? Uh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Pero once it's, uh, uh, ano na naman, it's re it is refiled, what will happen mm -hmm. is that for the oppositors to the bill, they, they will have more time now to to oppose it, to, to you know, um, make uh, press releases uh, to uh, generate uh, opposition to the bill. So, ang daming pwedeng gawin para maano siya, kumbaga maantala yung pag-move niya, no? Into yeah. the negative bill. It, it, it should be very interesting again it's a procedural to no but we'll take a look at the eventual vote uh kasi doon sa house no overwhelming yung vote uh, i think there were only five or six who voted against it no? uh, and of course like i said in the senate it was 21 0 so it's, it's interesting now how it will how it will uh, uh fare no in in, you know, in the next round uh, but Manny, uh doc jean uh, who stands to gain from the veto Ako, tingin ko, kabite. 
Uh-huh. Kasi di ba yung proposal ni Boeing is uh, magkaroon din ng airport na sa Sangli Point. That's right. So, so uh, again, politika to, no? Uh, siguro kasi si Daniel Fernando hindi sinuportan si BBM nung nakarang eleksyon mm-hmm. at si Boeing ay eh, nasa kanyang gabinet. So, kung politically, eh, tignan, tingin ko, eh, kabite ang may kinabang dito. Okay. Uh, Doc Jean, do you share that view or do you have another perspective? Uh, well, hindi ko kasi alam yung, I mean, of course, yung dynamics nung kay Daniel uh, Fernando and yung Ken, we all know it kasi it's been ano uh, publicly um, ano naman shared by these people but then um, well people who oppose to oppose the legislation yung mga environmentalists di ba mm-hmm. yung Oceania group yung uh, people who would be displaced by the airport. Di sila yung, by the construction of the airport, di sila yung magigain. But then, I thought San Miguel already made plans for them and some have already been relocated. Yun yata yung uh, akala ko din eh. So, yeah. yeah, so that, med- would, yeah. that would be part of, you know, the, you know, uh, the other aspects to, to, the, to the issues of, uh, you know, I'm just focusing on the political and the procedural, mm-hmm. procedural, procedural part, you know. But I have to say, you no, know, doing research for this uh, show, uh, I was I was maybe not surprised that one of the first reactions came from Clark International Airport <laughs> or Clark Report, you no, know, saying that the veto is good for Clark, uh, you know, because it will uh, heighten investor interest in Clark uh, and so on. And really, when when we look at it, you no. Know, uh, yeah, I guess from a bird's eye view or a plane, plane, uh, you know, right. you know <laughs> you'd think that uh, okay, maybe Bakanga uh, Clark, which is you know up and running already, has a new terminal uh, uh, operational already, uh, might uh, uh, gain the most uh, from this. Ah, Clark, oh, oh, yeah. I thought that the opposition to having another airport beside. Uh, uh, very near Clark is ano, a, an issue of uh, security or safety. No, I think it, it was a, uh, an issue. And in the veto message, it was defined as an issue of uh, parang, uh, having, yeah, two, yeah, having two uh, mm-hmm. special economic zones in one strategic location, meaning it wasn't uh, cost effective for the cost country. Oh. But uh, it should have been known from the very start. I, I, you know, yeah, I mean, that's, even yeah, that's all other issue, you know, that's all other discussion whether no. it, 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 any of these airports uh, are good for the uh, are good for the country for the for the economy. Pero interesting lang, uh, and then of course all of these airport projects they're they're not just backed by politicians; they're backed by their own uh, taipans, no? Yeah, J. exactly. J. Kamel, Clark. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, San Miguel is in Bulacan. Uh, I'm not sure now who is who is in uh, Sangli. It's another group. Um, uh, I mean, these are these are very big players. Uh, I fully expect this issue to to continue uh, mm-hmm. in the next several years. Mm-hmm. Pero John, tingin ko three air, uh, yung airport sa Bulacan is not a uh, problem, ano? Kasi Pwede mong sabihin na magkakaroon ng growth triangle, no? Subic, mm-hmm. Clark, and Bulacan. Mm-hmm. And uh, Bulacan, sabi nila, uh, will be developed into a Silicon Valley type of uh, investments, no? Mm-hmm. Uh, may mga world-class hospitals na itatayo dyan. Mm-hmm. So, it's actually uh, different from what are the existing... Uh, investments or businesses in Clark and in Subic. So I think this will contribute to a a uh, bigger growth triangle for Central Luzon. Yeah. I mean, again, like I said, you know, that's a whole other discussion or series of discussions no? uh, looking at the economic uh, aspects no? uh, uh, of uh, each of these airports. Right now, we're just focused on the political and the procedural, no? Uh, uh, Doc Jean, I wanted to ask you, um, 
what's the significance that this is the first major act of the new presidency? Mm -mm. Yeah, that, that's why it's puzzling because normally, as I said, um, uh, presidents would have would want to have a very positive environment, uh, especially during the first few weeks and uh, perhaps first 100 days of uh, uh, his or her administration. So, medyo strange that uh, veto agad yung ano, no? veto agad yung, yung nangyari. So, that's that's something that uh, was unexpected and surprising. But also, it says that he is confident about his uh, control of uh, both houses of Congress. Um, so, yun, that, that's what I can say, politically speaking. No? But, uh, yeah, it's, it's really, I mean, I have not... Uh, um, seen anything or any or I do not know of any president who has, you know, uh, who did a veto of a bill um, in the first few days of his administration. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Manny, um, maybe my last question uh, for the two of you, I'll start with Manny and then let's end with uh, Doc Jean. No? Um <clears throat> So it's possible that, as you said, you know, we're looking at internal dynamics uh, mm -hmm. being laid bare, uh, maybe unexpectedly early. So we're now, of course, all curious. No? What's happening? Who's who's uh, who's uh, who's who behind the scenes, uh, and so on. Uh, but is it possible that all this uh, infighting or you know jockeying for position? will actually end up uh, with a good decision, good uh, for the country, I mean? Uh, it's still a big question, John. I think what Bong Bong wants to say is may bago ng boss sa Pilipinas. So mm -hmm. he's asserting his authority by uh, using his veto power. No? So and he just want to tell what Congress na ako na ang kabisirito kaya dapat kayong ano sumunod sa akin no so i think that's uh, the biggest statement that uh, bong bong did uh, on the first day of his uh, term mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh, in the longer uh, sa haba na ano we cannot say kung kung ito ba ay mga kabuti o mga kasama sa ating masa? Uh, siguro, abangan na natin ang susunod na kabanata. <laughs> uh, Doc Jean? Um, sa akin, I think whether it will be good or not, um, well, we still have to see because, well, it's not as if uh, the public is involved in mm -hmm. the internal dynamics. Eh? We still see uh, politicians and the elites mm -hmm. quarreling with each other over a policy that may, you know, uh, benefit uh, some people, you know, in the long run. So it's really not, I mean, how can it be for the, good of the country if um, only the elites are involved, mm -hmm. you know, in, uh, I mean, the warring or the quarreling elites are just involved, no, when um, uh, people, the ordinary, ordinary people do not have much to say about these things. So, you know, that, that's my point, actually. Maybe I'll... Uh... I'll insert one one last question, one more question. Uh, so it turns out that outgoing, uh, so that the uh, the former finance secretary Carlos Dominguez actually wrote uh, President Duterte, uh, uh, asking him to veto uh, this particular bill. Of course, the president, uh, the former president, did not do that. So that's why uh, it was left to President Marcos, no. So it, there was actually uh, a lobby on the part of uh, former Finance Secretary 
Carlos Dominguez, who had no love lost for Ramon Ang and the San Miguel group, uh, for the president to veto it. No? Um, Manny, uh, Doc Jean, do you think that uh, that played a role? Uh, was that a factor in the uh, decision of Marcos to veto uh, the bill? Or he came at it from his own premises? I think, John, sa tingin ko, sa kanyang panalaw, eh, iba yung iniisip ni ni Sunny Dominguez. Kasi alam naman natin yung dalawa eh, may mahabang history ng di pagkakasundo. No? Mm-hmm. Pero si Pangulong Marcos ay may sariling pag-iisip na tingin ko uh, sa tingin niya eh, may kakulangan yung bill. No? Mm-hmm. Uh, yung nga, sa revenue side, tingin ko, dun, mm-hmm. dun malaki ang pagkakulang. At uh, isa pa, eh alam mo naman ang ang negosyante ay kung sino nakaupo eh hindi siya lalayo, di ba? Lagi na kadikit 'yan. Kaya <laughs> uh, alam mo naman natin na matagal nang malapit ang mga Marcos sa San Miguel dahil kay Danding Juanco. Uh, Doc Jean? Yeah, I I'm ako I'm pretty sure that um Uh, President-elect must have listened to some people's reasons for suggesting that he uh, veto the bill. Um, and uh, that's also probably the reason why uh, the former president, uh, President Duterte, actually just allowed, just did not sign the the bill. Baka binilang niya na, ay, wala na ako dito. I don't want to decide on this. Kasi, na, ano na eh, na, na pag-usapan na 21 votes sa, sa Senate, ilan lang ang hindi nag-vote sa House, di ba? Mm-hmm. So, hinayaan niya yung uh, um, next uh, president siguro, or, bas, kasi binilang niya siguro, nakarating sa kanya, eh, hindi naman aabot ng 30 days eh, di ba? Mm-hmm. That's also probably the reason. Plus, Um, normally, well, unexpected talaga rin yung, yung ginawa ni President-elect, ay, President uh, Marcos Jr. Kasi normally, previous, uh, I mean, you will respect what had transpired before your term. Mm-hmm. Pero ito, parang, you know, um, he uh, just vetoed it all of a sudden. So that's that's what was weird about what happened. Ah, uh, talagang masalimot, ano? <laughs> uh, fortunately, uh, we have to call it a day. Dr. Jean Encinas Franco of the University of the Philippines and Manny, Mr. Pulitzer Mogato, thank you for your time, your insights, thank you. and your thank work defending the public. Thank you. Here. Salamat. Bye-bye. John. This may turn out to be a defining conflict of the second Marcos administration but it is only in its opening stages. I am certain we will be returning to this controversy many times in the next several years. So for the moment, that's it for us tonight. The next step for engaged citizens is always to take a more active part in building our democracy. See you in the public square. This is John Neri. Thank you and good night.